Gracias. Gracias. Going on, guys. I'm just fresh off of plane from Spain, and actually, I had the awesome opportunity in the last two months to spend uh, two long weekends. Uh, first in Madrid with my family, and second in Barcelona, just doing the touristy thing. And I can tell you that Spain is a great place, not just a great place for history and art and things to see and things to do, as you can see from the video that you just saw, but also a pretty decent place for somebody who's into wet shaving. Um, very similar. I'm trying to get my face wet because I'm going to get my shave on here after I'm done yapping at you. Uh, similar in a lot of ways to me to Germany. So uh, when you're looking for razors and stuff like that, most times you're going to need to go to a place that sells knives. And here's uh, a photo of a place that I found in Barcelona, thanks to owner, uh, who, uh, who told me about this place. They, they sell uh, a bunch of knives, but about a quarter of their store is dedicated to anything wet shaving. So straight razors and brushes, uh, lots of... Uh, aftershaves and other kinds of software like that, uh, Mersol, uh, you might have seen that around some places. That seemed to be a popular product in that place. But um, uh, so this, this place was like a little shaving oasis in the middle of Barcelona, but there are also uh, a lot of shaving products available in a, the, a huge uh, department store they have there called uh, La Cota Ingles, and they have uh, products such as this one, which is La Toja, and I'll be using that for my shave today. Also using for my shave today will be the, the Floyd Orange um, Balsamo Aftershave, and uh, the, uh, uh, I guess, also a kind of orange packaging of Floyd, um, and it says it's uh, Fragrancia Moderna y Masculina. Uh, I'm not going to try to explain to you what this smells like, but I will tell you it is Moderna y Masculina. Just kind of a cologne type of scent. Very, very nice. But anyway, so that's what the shape is going to be today. Also going to be using a UFO razor handle. As you can see, it's really nice knurling. It's like 120 grams of goodness. Um, you might ask, why would one need a... Uh, a super heavy, very knurled um, uh, razor hand, a custom razor handle like this. Well, I can tell you that the heavier, for me, the heavier that a handle is on a razor, um, the less it's likely to skip and the more I'm aware of the fact that, um, uh, the more I'm aware that I don't need to use the weight uh, or weight from my hand or any pressure from my hand, I find I get less irritation with a heavier razor like this, or a heavier handle like this. As for the razor itself, the head, the safety razor part, this is a DE89 or R89 from Mula, and that came to me courtesy um, of Chris Dawson. This uh, handle, by the way, came from my buddy Tyler Bowman in Arkansas. Uh, really nice. And this is, by the way, my favorite Franken razor, but the reason that I'm using it for this shave is because this UFO handle is made in Sevilla, which is in the southern part of Spain. So that's apropos to this shave, as is this jersey. You see the Estrella. This is the Spanish national team's jersey for the, the upcoming World Cup, which I'm very excited about being in Europe for. Um, <clears throat> I guess it's the second best place to be if you're not actually there. Um, finally, I don't have a Spanish brush, although, as you can see from this picture taken at La Corte Inglés, Spain does produce, uh, they're called V-Long, uh, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that, but V-Long brushes. Um, this is a Simo 1250. Uh, and I got this from David Marshburn uh, a long time ago when I was kind of just kind of starting out with it. I'm um, not sure if you can see that either way. But Simoog is made on the Iberian Peninsula, but not in Spain, and a place called Portugal, which I love. I'm going to load up the La Toja and this Mula um, porcelain uh, mixing bowl, which I really like because it's uh, just really the right size. A, a nice size dollop, probably the, a little bit larger than an almond in there. And, um, and then I'll get going with the shave. 
But uh, anyway, as I was as I was saying, uh, Spain and Barcelona. I'm sorry, Barcelona and Madrid have a very um, different character. Each of them, uh, Madrid's a much newer place, a newer city. Uh, Barcelona's been been kicking around there since the I think the 13th century. I could be wrong. Maybe it's the 14th century, but Barcelona's been there. Uh, I think it got its start around the time, well before Constantine did his thing in Rome and unified Rome under the Catholics uh, or the under Christianity rather. But um, so there's a lot more antiquity going on in Barcelona than there is in Madrid, although Madrid has its share of sites. Most of the footage you saw in the beginning of this video is taken from Barcelona, which I just think is a more uh, scenic place, uh, more history. But uh, if you want a good idea of how Spaniards live, Madrid is an awesome place to visit as well. And there, there are some very nice things to see there to include a royal palace and some good museums and things like that. So uh, just um, you can see it's a nice looking bit of uh, shaving cream there. It might need just a bit of water, just a little drop there. We'll see how that does. <clears throat> Interestingly, I think that one of the most fascinating things about Spain is that the different regions each have their different uh, different flavor, not just in terms of like the culture, but and and the food. But uh, Catalonia, which is where Barcelona is, is just a completely different feel from the rest of Spain. Uh, they have their own language. They have kind of like a semi-autonomous government, and uh, in fact. In recent years, actually, pretty much ever ever since, for centuries, they've been trying to gain their own independence. So it's kind of a neat, um, kind of a neat thing about Spain. Uh, and then up in the north area, north area, you have the Basque region, which has an again completely different language, completely different culture for the people. Really neat. So a three day uh, or, or maybe a four day scruff here. It's pretty. Uh, it's pretty nice and thick. Should be fun to shave off. Get this lathered up. And just a little bit more water. If you're looking for an inexpensive brush, these Samog um, brushes are made from boar. And um, you can have a 1250 like this for under for under uh, 20 bucks US dollars and uh, after you soak them and break them in uh, it takes about I don't know 30 days of shaves to really break them in good yeah they're just really soft uh, and really lovely uh, inexpensive brushes to, uh, to to shave with so Franken razor uh, just you might notice I'm doing things a little bit different these days I've, first of all, I've uh, done, I had some irritation and I was looking at my shave pattern a little bit better. Uh, I'm going to shave a little bit different than you might have seen me in my previous videos uh, to go with the grain completely on that first pass. So, and, and my grain grows completely different on one side than the other. And I, I was just doing it all wrong for the longest time. And I think I finally got it down. The second thing is, again, since I think I finally got wet shaving down, or at least the DE part, I'm going to be trying my hand at straight. So you'll notice that I'm going to change from my right hand side to my left hand side and try to shave the left side of my face, or at least most of it, with my left hand uh, to get ready for the straight razor. So that's going to be coming. Uh, and uh, I'm, not, I'm not, I'm probably not going to be doing a video on that for some time, but it's going to be an interesting thing for me to try. I just wanted a new challenge. So that's on its way. So without further ado. Oh, and also I'm gonna to try to stretch my skin the way I would stretch it if I had a straight razor with me. I'm just trying to get the mechanics that I can get down before I get the straight razor in my hands down uh, so that I'm more prepared when it comes, so.
Left hand. Right hand. <clears throat> so I'm still having a, a bit of trouble with my left hand. Um, it's just awkward, um, but it, it's not as hard as I thought it would be, but at the same time, it's just, I'm just not there yet. Um, I will tell you uh, just from, again, it, really it has just a very, just a plain, almost dove soap type of scent, this La Toya, but, it, uh, La Tocha, sorry, it, but it has a very nice glide to it, very comfortable shave. Um, but anyway, getting back to the, to the left-handed stuff, I just uh, I'm, I'm not there yet. But uh, I figure uh, better to do this now with a DE than with a cutthroat when it gets here, uh, which I'm just a little bit scared about. But here you go, um, pass number two. Uh, this is a brand new feather blade, uh, really pairs nicely with the relatively mild R89 head. Um, I think it's a really, a lot of folks get it for an entry level razor, but I think the, the R89 is great for anybody who has to shave every day. I mean, it's just very comfortable shave, very well made, well manufactured uh, piece of a kit. So. Hey, thanks, Chris. I appreciate you sending this my way. Left hand. So all in all, although I did find the uh, the one cool shop in Barcelona with all the shaving gear. I think your best bet if you're going to go visit is just hit up Corte Inglés. Oh, there's so much soap left over in here. Um, Corte Inglés just has so much stuff uh, from brushes. Uh, they even had some V-Long razors. I've never actually seen one of those before, uh, but I need another razor. Like I need a hole in the head. Uh, but uh, there seems to be quite a bit of Spanish-made stuff for, for wet shaving, so I, I have to believe that it's a bit more popular there than some of the other countries that seem to be, be more overrun with the Procter & Gamble offerings. One more pass. That was a nice shape. 
So the Latocha does a really nice job. Face feels great. This is the um, Piel Sensible. I think it's just uh, basically just a sensitive formula uh, and with uh, salt and, and minerals in it. So uh, if you ever see this, uh, it's, it's definitely a keeper. It's a very, very nice smelling. Uh, my face feels uh, nice and moisturized. No irritation. Great shave. So uh, I'm going to finish up with... Um, I, I like to do an aftershave splash before I do the balm. Just kind of lock it in. Uh, just a little bit there. A little bit of an alcohol burn. Feels nice and slick though. So there are those aftershaves out there that to me don't feel like anything more than throwing water on your face or alcohol. And you get that burn, but you don't feel any sort of uh, glycerin or anything else in there that gives you any sort of uh, protection or moisture. But that is not the case with this Floyd. I really like it. And I, I have no idea how to describe it. So if you have, uh, if, if you can explain it better than I can, please put it in the comments there uh, so that other people know what it smells like. But I'm sorry, I just... I, it, and the balm smells very similar. I just don't know how to explain it. But a great finish to a lovely Spanish shave. Enjoy, and we'll see you next time.